Hi everybody and welcome to another video. In this video I've got another typical modeling scenario that in, it's actually going to be very useful to be able to show that Cinema 4D's modeling tools actually come with dual uses and during development and design of modeling tools it's, it's not always possible to guess what comes out and sometimes you can do stuff with modeling tools that they weren't that were never designed or intended to in the first place and with this project i'm going to have a look at the bevel tool and um, the mesh checker now the mesh checker is a quite an interesting uh, feature in that about well a couple of releases ago uh, maxon introduced the mesh checker because they recognized 3D printing is becoming really popular with content creators. Either they're printing out their own uh, 3D creations that they've modeled themselves, or it's possible to work with 3D scanned data. But a lot because of the way 3D printing works, you need a watertight, clean mesh. Like one object that's perfectly watertight. There can't be any holes, no no rips in the polygons, nothing that has to be perfectly uh, was tight. And this is where the, the mesh checker comes in. So it's basically, it was, it's initial purpose is for helping people create geometry for 3D printing. But I can actually use it for also just general modeling and also for helping you to select stuff. Um, so let's crack on. So yeah, this project is all about knurling. Uh, this machine knurling, it's, uh, it's a machine process for giving something to grip hold of onto a smooth cylinder. So if I go back to a fresh page, and uh, as you can see, up at the top, I've already got docked my picture viewer. And in my picture viewer, I've got a few examples, because I always like to keep my keep these examples close to hand so I can go quickly always go back and look at them just make sure I'm what I am modeling is actually reality and uh, in this case you can also see that knurling isn't just all about sort of knobs and that kind of stuff but it's it's also appearing these days in high-end um, archviz stuff uh, it's quite nice to look at and it's not just there to keep your greasy fingers from slipping it's it's quite pleasing to look at too um, so that's knurling and let's start with our cylinder which nearly all learning is uh, machined onto I'm gonna bring the subdivisions down a little bit we don't need that many for this little example and just create some subdivisions that, that way and uh, I always try to do as much as I can with the primitive object before squashing it down to polygons because it's just easy to use the attribute manager to uh, create what I need so then hit C and straight away because I've got my mesh checker active which I should actually show you where to find it and you'll find the mesh checker in uh, commands and into the modeling settings and into the attribute manager you will find the mesh checker has its own tab and uh, all you have to do is activate it and I have and I like to create like a little button in my interface for any for any action that I'm going to be doing more like like continuously during a project I'll create a little button using the commander and I've, I've been through that before in a previous video I'll do that again now so I've got my uh, picture viewer and my mesh checker buttons but straight away in the viewport I can see something strange going on and that's the mesh checker is pointing something out to me and in this case we can see the green is telling me it's a boundary edge and if anyone knows anything about primitives is that when you convert a cylinder primitive to polygons is that the caps are not connected and this is exactly what the mesh tracker is here is telling me this is a boundary edge it's like just a polygon ending in a very sharp way it's not connected to anything and this object the cylinder is actually a three objects not connected to each other 
So you can easily fix that by going into point mode and hitting, oops, well you can do that, but <laughs> we can just hit optimize and all of a sudden it disappears. And now we do actually have a watertight ready to print cylinder, but we don't obviously want to print, we want to keep on modeling. Now, uh, if we go back to our picture viewer, you can see that a null is actually consisted of no vertical lines. We, we actually see horizontal lines going through. They're actually cons making the, they're an important part of the shape of a pyramid. One of the many, many pyramids that a, a null surface is made up of. And you see there's no verticals. They're all at these um, sort of diagonal angles. So this is what we need to do on our mesh, cylinder mesh. If we go to side view, we can see that our side, our default mesh from a cylinder isn't useful in any way. Now we've got to try and somehow turn all of these verticals into diagonals like this. And as cinema doesn't really have any tools to do this, we have to try and figure out a way of being able to do it by using the, the tools that are there. And this is where where I go back to my original points is that cinema has tools that you know, they weren't really designed specifically to do a job, but they can do their job. And in this case, get rid of that. In this case, that is actually the bevel tool. And uh, the bevel tool actually works not just on edges; it will work on points and on polygons, for that matter. In this case, we want to concentrate on the points. So if I go to a side mode or side view and my rectangle selection, I want to select these points. Now, nearly every time I'm modeling something, I'm thinking ahead about possible problems that could occur. And I've always got in my head my, my containment method of modeling. And especially if I'm using something that has curves or a, or a mathematically perfect curve, such as a radius of a cylinder. And um, what I always want, because it is a cylinder, I would like it to remain a cylinder. So that's why I'm going to leave these top and bottom polygon loops as they are. I don't want to touch them. I want to keep them clean and tidy, and they're going to help me later on. If I need to do anything with this cylinder, I need to extrude up or scale or whatever, I still have a perfect radius. So with my points selected, if I right click, I can call up my modeling, various modeling commands and I pick up bevel. And immediately I can just start to bevel in the viewport and you can see I am actually getting straight away the topology that I want. These diagonals, my verticals are being turned into diagonals. Um, but the only problem is when I go too far, I get this overlapping. But this is easily fixed with um, the bevel tools limit function. Boom, straight away you can see now that my points are nicely lined up. But there's one problem now is that my mesh checker is going bananas. It's telling me that this line here, well, what is this line telling me actually? Oh, go away. So I've got here, I've got a bad polygon here because it's an end gon. I've got bad polygons in here. I've got, uh, what else have I got? I've got complex poles and all kinds of things, but don't have to worry too much right now. But all you have to understand is what it's telling you and why it's telling you. Because all of these problems are coming up because one, when we beveled and created these, all of these points have been pushed together into this one point. So we basically have four points now occupying the same space. And again, if we run the optimize command, this basically wells all of our points that are sharing the same either the exact same position in space or within a, a tolerant or within a certain tolerance of, of each other. In this case, it's actually quite small. 
I think the default is not point. Oh no, I've actually got it set it to one, which is you kind of you, you don't have to be worried about um, going up in this case because the cylinder is actually quite big. So in this case, one works brilliantly. Um, I'm still getting some um, feedback from the mesh checker. It's telling me these polygons here there's a problem. It's telling me these are actually fine. Um, there's no problem. But if you can just have a little look around the geometry, you can see this polygon is actually perfectly flat because it's sitting on this face, this subdivided face of the, of the old cylinder. But these issues that we're receiving here they're actually now, what is the mesh checker telling me? They are actually called a non or a not planar polygon. Basically means it's bent. You'd normally have to have an edge. This is essentially three triangles, but it, as it's one polygon without an edge here in the middle, like a spine, it's, it's bent and it's giving me a problem. So this is something we don't have to act on right now, but we'll just keep in mind for the next stage. And that is, we need to um, we need to now construct the point of the pyramid. And uh, one of the most used tools when polygon modeling is either extruding out or extruding in. And with polygons, you can extrude in like this, which is exactly what we want because we want to create an extra four points. So we want to turn into a single point to make our pyramid point. So let's go backwards in our side view. Select all of our polygons we want to work with. And with um, extrude inner, oh, it's already set. So if we go back to the default um, attribute, we can actually see if we extrude in now with all of these polygons selected. They've been treated as one big polygon, which is not what we want. So if I go backwards and in the attribute manager, click off preserve groups. Now every polygon will be treated as an individual. So if I come do come in, uh, the mesh tracker again is telling me that there's a problem and I can visually see there's a problem this time. Let's deselect that, hit my lines. Um, I can see that there's two types of of polygon going on here. There's the correct type that's running straight down one of these faces of the original subdivision. And if I go to one of the edges of the subdivision, you can see every newly created polygon, the edges as they've, they've been extruded inwards don't actually line up. It's doing the job correctly. It's actually taking the average angle and um, extruding inwards like it should do. But in this case, it's not correct because it's just missing each other. Unlike in this one, you get a nice planed polygon, but this one is just the edges miss each other by a mile. So if I go backwards, and this is where there's a big difference between extruding and scaling. They do the same thing. You, you make you make a polygon smaller or larger, whereas the extrude inner, you create new geometry. With scaling, you can actually scale without having to worry about average angles and this kind of the other. So all we want to do is this in this case is just use the inner extrude just to simply create geometry. We don't want to do anything with it with this tool. Just simply do a very small amount, hit apply, we've actually made the start of a new polygon and this is where we can actually start using the normals of the polygon and we have move scale and rotate tools to be able to manipulate normals like on a polygon level and in this case we, t we take our normal scale and click somewhere in the viewport and just drag all the way down and luckily it will stop at 0%. That means all of those newly created points we created with the inner extrude are now sitting on top of each other. You can use the attribute manager to go past 0, go to minus, and you can see this in the viewports now. 
that's not what we want we actually wanted it at zero but luckily as I said if you just drag and drag once it will stop at zero giving you exactly what you want and again the mesh checker is going bonkers but ignore that too um, so by scaling to zero a polygon with four sides we again have four points on top of each other so this is where we can go straight back to our optimize command uh, in point mode make sure there's no points selected in this case because that would suck because if you only had if you didn't realize you were down here and you had a point up here selected when you run the optimize command it will only optimize those selected points and you'll be sat there thinking what the hell's going on because nothing's changed so always click away in the viewport deselect make sure there's nothing selected when running the optimize command and then hit your optimize and then boom at this point I always do a visual check try not to always trust the tools because later on there might be a case where a point was missed or something didn't happen and just give a quick visual check over and I can see here that's good so far you know the fong shading will tell you if there's a problem or if there's a bad polling on it will turn up black but in this case everything's working fine so and I've because I've still got the mesh checker on it's giving me it's telling me something that there's one specific problem now and it's always these points that are being highlighted with the uh, this particular color and this is pretty cool because when I'm looking at this mesh I can now see the, the I can, what I can see straight away is that there's two types of points I have this point which is a nice normal regular point that connects four edges together which would be a normal regular point then I've got here this point here which is creating a, what we call a pole and that's what the mesh tracker is picking up on because poles generally are not that nice uh, uh, with polygons they don't behave very nicely uh, but in this case we can leave them because we need they're essential actually for the creation of our pyramids you know you can't have these four pyramids without a pole um, but to create our pyramids we actually need to be able to scale this out to create our pyramids so we do actually need to select every other point going around and also vertically and you can't do that manually you, you, you'll go absolutely bonkers crazy doing that but uh, our mesh checker will actually do it for you we call up our mesh checker and over here hidden because this is quite a, a wide interface object very often you won't actually realize but over here not only can we see just exactly how many problems we have we can actually select those problems and straight away in the viewport I can now see all of these pole points have been selected and there's one up here as well but they're not the ones I want are they because I want this these regular points are actually the points I need to be able to scale out to create the tip of my pyramids and that's quite easy to achieve by hitting V to call up your head up display and hitting invert and boom all of a sudden you've got the correct points selected now you've got everything selected that you don't need so if I go to my rectangle selection deselect everything I don't need because I only want to start with the points that are going to create pyramid points so these first three loops on the top and the bottom are not necessary um, as a default when you activate the scale tool with the T key I you need to decide how you want to scale in this case I'll, I need to scale using world coordinates and I don't want to scale on the Y so when I do click in the viewport and start dragging and scaling my pyramid points scale nicely out perpendicular from the actual geometry and there we have no link it's really simple um, just by using tools that you thought weren't specifically for that task we've actually created quite a complex geometry 
Um, and again, I'm not going to leave it like that because nothing in this world has sharp edges. And the whole reason of creating uh, knurling as geometry rather than bump mapping or n normals or this is that so you can actually have uh, close ups and you can and the good thing with close ups is that you can actually see reflections and speculars and rounded edges are really important to be able to help you do that and um, so what I'll do is also very simple if I just collect, select all of my edges that I want to have rounded and then I create a bevel deformer select both of them hit command or alt G to group them under a null you can see straight away though that the bevel deformer is deforming every single edge of the um, geometry but this we can um, con we need to restrict the bevel to just these selected edges so in the viewport we call up our head up display using V and we can select in the select menu set selection and this creates in the object manager a tag that contains all of the information necessary that these um, it, it, it just collects uh, creates a selection of these um, edges here and now we can just drag and drop into our bevel deformer in the selection field our selected edges and then you can just start going creating something real world make them a little bit sharper give them a curve then all of a sudden you've got perfect knurling with nice rounded edges so you can catch the highlights and it really helps with your photorealistic rendering later so that's it really um, there's a million ways to do the same task and if you feel like you can you know a technique that's better or quicker or if you'd like to add anything just leave a a comment down in the message section and um, maybe other maybe that'll be useful for other people so I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again for another one Bye-bye.